Hello everyone, this is Beagle Hunter, and today we begin round two, well, part two, of our match between Shelby and Silver Hakero. So, um, both players already picked their characters. Um, Shelby does get to choose where to go first or second, um, because Silver Hakero took the first game. Ragnar beat Polar Knight. Now, uh, Shelby gets to choose where to go for a second, Alex to go first, and plays Rachel. Rachel, I think, um, a good choice against um, Silver Arcaro's remaining characters. Um, Silver Arcaro's remaining two characters are Sajin and Beheaded. And um, both Rachel being kind of a zoner um, can deal with both of them pretty well. They both have both Beheaded and Sajin have limited options at range. Beheaded only has the bow, infantry bow, and also phaser. Rachel, meanwhile, has um, quite a few projectiles. Tempest Dahlia, Flying Lobelia, and uh, Tiny Lobelia. Yeah. Puts traps over the field, can limit movements. Quite a very, a very solid character overall. Um, her UA, her UA by itself is actually amazing. Like spending force to close the retreat and then strike and then take another action. Um, that just allows so much good repositioning and action compression. But it's still um, a little bit resource intensive, cost force for her to do. Beheaded is your standard um, Shoto character. Basically has standard tools to deal with situations. The only thing uh, Beheaded lacks is a DP, but Wave of Denial becomes a DP with extra range being boosted. Okay, so turn one strikes from Rachel. Playing fly Flying Lobelia. Um, the cleanup is actually really good. She's, she, um, Shelby spent Tiny Lobelia for force, and you can use the cleanup to Basically, um, yeah, you use uh, pays, use uh, tiny lobelia, pays for the force, goes to the discard, and then um, can use it and pick it up later if activating the after effect of returning lightning rod to deal two non-lethal damage. So Shelby can see that tiny lobelia back in her back in his hand again, or her hand again. But yeah, overall, um, decent value. Okay. Strike immediately, this telegraphs. Um, the only thing that hits at range 5 for behead is the bow. So this telegraphs infantry bow pretty face up. Shelby can block or cross out. Or just wall swing. Hope to get the right answer. Okay. Gets hit by the bow. Unfortunately, loses a sweep for his troubles. Oh, elects to change cards. Had the block. Surprised that he didn't play it. Block is just a good option just to negate a bit of damage and get engaged. But. I don't know, chooses not to block, maybe hoping to get a wall swing instead. Beheaded boost tornado. Tornado, a pretty solid boost. Gives you extra speed and extra move and a little bit of movements. So it allows him to set up. Range four is much better for beheaded than range five. Because now he can threaten more stuff. Oh well, actually, yeah, he can threaten bow, dive attack, or just regular dive. Maybe we will be seeing hmm. Likely maybe we'll be seeing Rachel boost something of her own. Play something 
Rachel has a few continuous boosts that basically act as traps on the board. So we might be we might see one of those. Um, yeah. It's kind of weird for Rachel that lightning rods are not an actual card or an actual object. It's represented by her face down cards. Very interesting choice. Wow, a Lex Doom go to range one. Interesting. That means Shelby does have a sweep down, so must have other good close range options, I guess, like electric chair or focus or even grasp. We need to range ones that Rachel's not something you see too often, but it depends on all depends on Shelby's hand. And speed is less and less important stats when the opponent's in your face. Generally. You can leverage speed more at mid range, where you can basically try to stuff like spike, dive, assaults to beat crosses. So speed is less important when the opponent's in range one. Okay, boost armor guard, always a good choice. Unfortunately, Rachel right now is standing on her own lightning rod, so it's not going to be triggered anytime too soon. Okay, beheaded chooses to exceed. Gave the trait, which will give him a permanent stat bonus to his specials and ultras. And gets plus one power, plus one speed. Extremely good exceed. Elex for guard. And now we had it with plus one power, plus two speed, and extra guard to his specials and ultras. Can do can do a lot of things here. Can safely play wrenching whip at range one or Assault Shield is the big threat with Survival trait. Okay, we go for a reading here. Let's see if it pays off. Oh, I'll just ask what was the reading. Ah, okay. A sensible choice, because range one because that range one spike whiffs so it's a generally good reading to do at this range so look at beheaded options here dive would probably be a waste um you might just see a cross or an assault shield coming from him Cannot play Phaser, cannot play his Ultras. Okay, plays the Assault Shield. Ooh, Spike Drop. Okay. This actually has a total of four guard. Actually, will stun him. Very good choice. Nicely played by. Shelb. Spike drop does indeed. Um, it's actually a really good answer to Assault Shield because Assault Shield only packs two guard and Survival only gives two extra guard, so it wouldn't be able to uh, beat and ignore armor five damage spike drop. Nicely, nicely, nicely done. And now Shelb, even though reading was quote unquote unsuccessful. Um, Turned out to be actually quite good because he won the combat and also got hand info. Now, Silver Alcaro knows that his options at this range are limited now. With Assault Shield gone, really only cross hits. So we might see cross to move to range 3. So that dive is a threat. Yep, there we go. So now... Trending EX Dive, definitely a good choice. And his hand becomes much more active because he also has 
uh, infantry bow. Rachel, I think probably should prepare here. Needs uh needs some more resources to function. But we'll see. An assault here would actually be great as well because you can assault and then um Okay, we're striking. Looking like this looks like it could be an assault then. Because that's definitely a answer to EX dive. And an answer to infantry bow. Ooh. Okay, top stack the top stack the focus at for end of turn. Definitely a good thing to pull out to um, sort of win against assault. So I kind of knew better than to play the cards that were already known. Yep, assault into prep. Good choice. Striking. I think he is striking with the card. I don't know if Hakero shuffled his hand. He's probably striking with the card he just drew from focus. But I think it's... It's either that or Wave of Denial. Wave of Denial is so, so low value here. Makes no sense. Becomes, Wave of Denial is a, definitely a, a weaker grasp. If you don't take advantage of the extra power. We'll see if Focus with Shelby. Oh, okay. So he did top deck the sweep from Focus. So we'll both take four damage, we'll both trade. Oh. Rip the card out before Shelby could shuffle it. But that's okay. Not a big deal. So now dead even, both dead even on life. Um, Rachel's sitting on four gauge, which is nice. Losing the Tempest Dialogue does hurt a bit because Rachel loves that f force from Ultras. Let's see what happens here. Rachel's overdrive does give her more mobility and more uh, influence on the opponent's um, position. In addition, there's more action compression because she can play boost at the start of her turn. So we might we might see Rachel exceed, given enough gauge, and just basically try to place a lot of stuff on the board or just boost and threaten really scary strikes. Beheaded, two gauge. Ops did not exceed just yet. I think Shelby's, both focuses are down on Shelby's side. So luckily, so Rakara doesn't have to worry about reading anymore. Can safely keep normals. Tough call what to do here for Rachel. And this is a pretty. We reached a mid game. Both players pretty much on even footing. Rachel might, might either play for an overdrive or play to trend one of her ultras. Well, ideally, Tempest Dahlia is very good. 
Beta Beta Lily is um, only really good if the opponent is sitting on a bunch of lightning, lightning rods, or just as a fast attack. I mean, as a fast poke from range, it works as well. But Rachel is not a very high power character without lightning rods. Okay. He likes to move to range 5. Immediately boosts Tornado. To close the distance and trend some speed. So now EX Dive is still scary. He did have infantry bow, so he could also have played that at range 5. Actually, infantry bow is a bit risky to play because flying lobelia will stun and outspeed it. Well, it won't stun with survival because it's only true power. But the push on flying lobelia will. The push on flying lobelia will move him out of range for. Um, We'll move him out of range to play infantry bow. I think heavily considering to exceed here. I think Tempest Dahlia, if Shelby had second copy, Temp Dahlia is a good choice here as well to defuse the tread of EX Dive. And get some cards. We'll see what he goes with, though. Okay. Spends one force to retreat one. And can take another action. Oh, okay. Cool. Spends one force to retreat and second action to exceed. So now Rachel in an exceed mode can not only close the retreat, but it can also push or pull the opponent by spending force. And can play Katuna's boost from hand. So in this position, can do some really scary stuff. Can boost power, um, sit and strike. Can boost, uh, can put a chap on the board before striking. Gust of wind is also an option. Oh, I didn't see. I think. Oh, he exceeded. Okay. Beheaded exceeds at range 5. Which may be dubious. But if you can get off an infantry bow, then it's okay. Discards down to 7 at the end of his turn. Discards wave of denial. Oh, and takes the brutality trait. So overdrive goes off for Rachel. And she can now play continuous boost from her hand. Maybe we'll see a speed boost. One sweep is still available. Power boost, okay. Ah, good choice. So boost power and parries the infantry bow. Nice. So now beheaded has all these stats and brutality transformed. I say transform, but it essentially is a transform. But now he can no longer try anything in range five because both bows are down. So at this point he has to he is actually essentially forced to close in to do stuff. He still has um the EX dive still a threat, so he got to spend force, at least one force to close in, and try something scary. He might also elect to tech the grass boost, but then that essentially gives a free turn to Rachel to do whatever she wants, because range 5, got nothing to worry about. With both infantry bows down, Rachel is the zoner.
Oh, nice choice. Dodge roll gives him gives me headed a surprising amount of mobility. Essentially works as a cross cross boost. And now he can try to plus two speed. He can try to eight speed um, twin daggers for five damage. Eight speed, five damage. Pretty respectable. Pretty respectable stat line. Shelby has to be a little bit careful here. Shelby shouldn't forget overdrive. Um, Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can choose to play a continuous boost from his hand. Sorry, Shelby. Uh, if you're getting your pronouns wrong, just let me know. Because for some reason, I think I'm actually not totally sure if you're a guy or gal or neither. So. Forgive me. Shall be taking long and hard though. What will he boost with? Maybe he will boost. Electric chair is not a bad choice here if Shelby has it. Okay, okay. Boost speed. That's a bit spicy now. So now with Shelby has plus two speed to contest with Behead is plus two speed. Now um as an action, it can definitely push Beheaded if it if he so desires onto the lightning rod. And play something fast to do damage and stun him. That's definitely a play that Shelby could be working towards right now. If you're finding if you're finding a beheaded player, um, you always have to find try to find a way to defuse the threat of beheaded stats and try to win the strike cleanly, or else either you're gonna trade down or beheaded just gonna stun you with the extra power and speed. It's very dangerous. We'll see what Shelby does here. Oh, interesting. Okay. Choose to close one and striking. Interesting. Now, telegraphing something fast at range one. Or it could just be an electric chair. I think a grasp into the lightning rod is something that is he's planning to do. Because it would be a seven damage grasp, if it was if it is indeed a grasp. Yeah, Rachel's overdrive is good, even though it requires. It is a bit expensive, but if you have the cards for it, you can try to love really scary, nasty stuff. Okay, we'll see what we had to play. Assault shield. Oh no. So indeed we do see the seven damage grasp. But not enough to stun out assault shield because assault shield is busted. Assault shield is essentially a focus on steroids with the right stats. So this will be very unfortunately very painful for Rachel. A painful trade. Returns the tiny lobelia to hand, and now beheaded takes four damage because uh, seven damage minus three armor, 
it hits back four, seven. Yeah, that's going to hurt. No, nine. Hits back for nine. Yep, Assault Shield is a fair and balanced card. Ladies and gentlemen. Is it nine or eight? Okay, never mind. He only has four guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's five five power, six for exceed, and plus two for the trade. So that's eight. So yeah, all, all in all, a very good trade for beheaded. Jesus. Hakero is getting some good options to deal with the situations he's thrown in. Oh, something on Discord real quick. Okay, um, Shelby both, um, I mean, sorry, Silver Carol boosting Giant Killer on his turn. A monstrous plus four power. Could try to just close out the game right here. Shelby did expend the dive. So, unfortunately, may not be able to detect this massive threat. Shelby's hand is already, half of it is already known. We already know that Shelby returned a tiny lobelia to hand. And range one options, he had it still has those. Okay, boost initiative to give him a little bit extra speed. Plays that one fast. This could be a sweep like Shelby is gonna wall swing and pray. Yep, it is indeed a focus. This is going to hurt. Only takes one, it hits back for seven. There's only one armor. Ouch, a painful exchange. And draws a card on top of that. Not a good spot for Rachel. In the quarter. Oh, okay. On hit, does draw one card. Now, Shelby's goal is basically to try and win strikes cleanly from now on. Cannot afford to take even the slightest bit of damage. Um, one sweep is still ally for beheaded. But otherwise... Oh, Shelby's looking to discard as well. Good choice. Yeah, the only the only sweep like beheaded has is the only slow defensive. By by when I say sweep like, I mean like slow defensive, counter hitting uh, attacks. So beheaded on beheaded side, he only has one sweep. So that's something to be mindful of. So Shelby should be looking to try and outspeed beheaded wherever he can, stun him, and try not to eat sweep. Important turn for Shelby. Has to make a heck of a comeback to be able to win this game. Rachel's running low of cards. We may see a reshuffle here. I think both blocks are down. So it could be important to do a reshuffle. However, um, as the nature of C5 characters is that 
they have weaker defensive reshuffle because they are forced to draw their astral rather than the top of the deck. So if you're looking for a defensive option like block or cross or something, it's going to be harder with Season 5 because they just have to rely on Wild Swing and Prey. So while Astrals are amazing, Burst is amazing. It does come with downsides. It does make for a weaker defensive reshuffle. Wow. How much force is that? A lot. Uh, the math probably checks out. I trust the math to check out. But wow. That is indeed a lot of force spent. Does Beheaded have cross to close in the distance? One cross is still available for Beheaded. So Beheaded can still keep up the pressure by just playing one cross. I don't dislike that play. I think moving to range 5 where nothing will hit is perfectly perfectly uh, okay thing to do, even though it costs a lot of force. But you know, Shelby can't afford to take any hits, so gotta do what you can. Maybe had to spend a force of his own. Spent 2 force, much more meager. Close two, range three, a lot better for him. Lotus Barrel. Is he playing Lotus Barrel Boost? Yes, indeed. So put Lotus Barrel, putting a spike drop underneath Beheaded's feet. Will that be enough to to win the game? Let's see. Beheaded actually has a whole a bunch of range stuff tree to train here. One dive is confirmed to be in his hand, I think, still. Yeah, one dive still in his hand. We got assaults. We got spikes. We got wrenching whips. We even got dive attack. In fact, oh, interesting. Expense assault and dive to move to range one. Maybe assault is not as... actually range three. Um, there is still the threat of. There's the threat of um, Whirlwind being 6 speed, stuffing stuff out. So, yeah, I think moving to range 1 is definitely definitely a play. Just you don't worry about a 6 speed special. I think Shell. Maybe look to reshuffle here. I think you really want to get a block or a focus or something that'll help you survive. Oh yeah, Wave of Denial is a threat as well. That is a grass flag that hits for 6 damage with, beha with uh, Brutality. Yeah. Okay. Ah, Abyss Gyms. Actually, not too familiar with this boost. 
Let me read this second boost again. Plays the space to draw one. If it's in the space, plus a power, may push or pull one. Ah, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Um, can definitely use that boost to. Well, both grasps are down. Crosses are down. Assaults are down. Rachel is lacking in. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunately that's game. I think Rachel was lacking any fast options in range one, so Grasp can just neatly close it out. Perhaps there's focus somewhere in deck? No. Yeah, so no focuses to armor hits and no nothing fast. So unfortunately and blo both blocks were down, unfortunately. Just a very bad situation for Shelby. I think Shelby should have looked to reshuffle and get some more options in deck because he was sorely lacking on them. And of course, beheaded with still plenty of options in range one. Super happy to just um, play grasp and win. Well played. Pretty uh, back and forth game, but some big strikes seal it for beheaded. I think it was an eight damage focus and a. Uh, 7 damage assault shield that closed the game out. I mean, it's hard to come back from those. Definitely hard to come back from those. Beheaded has those really big power spikes sometimes, and you gotta play around them. Um, yeah. Good games to both players. And that, and therefore, Silver Rocker wins the set 2-0. Thanks for watching, guys.